Hi everybody, Chris here from Tree Holistic. Now this video is uh, the second part to a video I released only about a week ago which was called The Mind Is Not Your Innate Intelligence. And I've been getting a lot of downloads of information in relevance to the validity of that. And also looking at the process of duality or what we like to call the game of duality. And kind of who is behind duality? Who is behind the mind? Um, we have full confirmation of what the mind actually is now, okay? And confirmation that the mind is not us. It's something external to us. Okay, so we're going to go through a, a few concepts in this video. Um, going into greater depth regarding that, okay? So let's start off with... Um, the first part I want to talk about is what we call Generation 3, okay? And that is the reality that you are residing within, okay? And why we call it Generation 3 is because you have a signature or energy signature that you share with your soul family, right? Which are variants of you that exist in other realities you know quite often they're come they're called your higher self or higher selves um it's essentially your soul family because it, as i say they share the same energy signature so they are you but it's you existing on other planes of existence whether we want to call it dimension or realm or or an existence and so each reality is called a generation because how do we use generation here we use that very much in a, a family context, don't we? Uh, older generation, younger generations. We call this one that you're seeing the Chris within this reality and the people that are watching and listening, you are in generation three, okay? So your higher self would be generation four, five, six, and so on. And uh, that's why you connect to your higher self, what we call quantum entanglement, because you share the same energy of si uh, signature energy but what we're finding is that this generation three this reality has been your environment for all of your lifetimes as the human okay and we look at all these different lifetimes like a cycle right we're born into a lifetime and then we die and then we have another lifetime we have another lifetime and we have another lifetime come back that's how we see it, okay? That, that's the, the program of death, okay? Or a, or a lifetime or a life cycle. But that's part of duality. The so-called gods, we can call them manipulators, do not see that. They see the longer game. They don't see us as, oh, there's Chris in this lifetime, and then there's this other thing in another lifetime. They know you're infinite, but they want you, while you're in that lifetime, being orientated or controlled by the mind. So into duality, where you get locked in the mind, and the mind locks you into duality. That you never figure that out. So while you're living out your life, you're do do doing because you think you're you're always racing against time. Because at that time, at that point, you just think you've only got one life. Don't don't we hear that from people? You only got one life. You're gonna make it count. Well, you're infinite, okay? So what they're doing, the, manipula uh, the manipulators, they're not just focusing on lifetime to lifetime. They're looking at the, the, the long game, and, and they want to keep you in that status for as long as they can. Okay. So every lifetime you have is in the same environment. So that's why quite often we can get, we can still have, an eff have effects. Things that are affecting us in this lifetime that we kind of don't have any connection to why it's like that, and quite often it can be connected to a, your previous lifetime, because you're still in the same environment. Now, um, so there's a real emphasis that we need to clean the most important environment of all, and this is this generation three. It's like your reality bubble, okay? Let's, bubble's kind of a word being thrown out there at the moment with the whole... Uh, you know what at the moment staying in your your own bubble and stuff like that. So I guess we'll use that term that term 
Um, and there is no such thing as one reality for everyone. We're not here, our purpose is not here to observe and participate as one brick uh, amongst a whole lot of bricks in that wall. You are here to create realities. That's your purpose, okay? Um, and that's also um, what you truly are. While we're in duality, we look at ourselves as the human. We look at ourselves as a, having a physical body. The manipulators, as well as your higher aspects yourself, do not see you as that. Okay, that's part of duality. It's part of the manipulation. Okay, you are an interface to allow intelligence through it to then create realities. That's your purpose. Okay. Uh, okay. So this whole aspect of being part of a collective, right? This oneness notion is part of duality. Again, it's trying to allow conformity instead of you being able to connect to your uniqueness, your authenticity, we like to call it. Or we could call it essence, okay? When we connect to that, you connect to your innate consciousness and it's, it's kind of end of the game for duality and for this intelligence that has been called the mind, okay? Uh, the manipulators. So really the true oneness is you being able to connect to self, which is, is the purpose of ascension. Ascension is rediscovery of self. And by doing that, you connect to your soul family who share your energy signature. Okay? That's the true oneness that we're looking for. Okay? Because once we do that, why I say that the game's over is because we have greater knowing and understanding of what is actually taking place in front of us. We're not just seeing an observation of an effect. We're seeing the cause with the effect. And we'll talk a bit more about that uh, later. But also you learn how to use your creative abilities. And we'll, learn a, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that as we go along. Okay. So why this is important to really focus on Generation 3 as this ultimate environment is because whoever controls that environment will then control the expression of what is within that environment. Okay? We've seen examples of that. A perfect example is in epigenetics. Right? The study of epigenetics, mapping out the genome, is realizing that you know, a gene is like a, a light switch. You can turn it on or turn it off. So what turns it on or turns it off environmental factors okay will express that gene by turning it off or allowing it to remain dormant okay it all comes down to uh, the environment another example of that is we look at the plant kingdom the brassica family which you know contains like broccoli cauliflower kale uh, kohlrabi and a whole lot of those they all originate from the original wild plant but they're all different expressions of that wild plant now how how would how did that come about through changing the environment of the plants what they're feeding the plant what soil that plant was in to change uh, uh, its dna or its genetics which is an expression of that original plant okay again a perfect example whoever controls the environment then will control the expression of what's within it okay now another term that's been coming up in regards to again if is geoengineering okay we quite often hear the term geoengineering in regards to the planet right is that with um global warming and those sorts of things now, the de definition of geoengineering is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of an environmental process that affects the Earth's climate to counteract the effects of global warming. Now, let, now let's, let's, let's just, uh, we'll, we'll come to how the Earth connects with us, but let's say if we remove the word Earth's climate out of it and we brought that definition and connection to us, the deliberate large-scale manipulation of an environment process that affects 
the earth's climate. What's that? An expression of the earth, right? Okay, if you can see the connection there, right? So, lately in sessions, there has been become a clearing for kites in regards to removing any form of geoengineering. Okay, so not not the earth. Now, one thing I must say about the earth, okay, is that the heart calibrates the earth, not the earth calibrating our heart. Okay. The word heart, the word earth, uses the same letters. The H is at the start of heart because everything starts there. And the letter H is at the end of, is the last letter in the word earth. So it starts with the heart and ends with the earth. Okay. For us to change what we think the earth needs or what this reality needs, where we have gone wrong, it doesn't change out there. It has to change within first. Okay? And that often gets missed. Okay? So what we are seeing as global warming is an effect from a cause within us. Like the cause is here. The expression is what we're seeing out here. Okay? It's not caused by us. It's parceled this way to make us feel low vibrational. We'll feel guilty about it, right? But something is happening within us at a quantum level that then we then gets reflected out here, okay? So again, again, this is just a plane of observation. The effect, not the cause to the effect, the, the effect. And what they're coming up with is just a guess, okay? Now, this comes to we the the idea that we're being terraformed, okay, which is the cause to the effect, okay, which then our reality will then reflect that as we are creators, okay, okay, we create through intention, okay, which then becomes reality. We create realities, as I said before. That's our purpose. Now, sadly, the reality we see out here with our duality eyes, two eyes, right? Duality, is 0.035% of the electromagnetic spectrum of light. And that's only the light in this reality. There are more spectrums of light outside of this reality. Just shows you how little we really see. So, it's an observational plane only. If we put it in this way, with the duality eyes, we see the effect to the cause. We don't see the cause, we see the effect to the cause. But these eyes will not allow us to see the spectrum of the, of the part of the electromagnetic spectrum where the cause lies within. Okay? So, for example, that's why in scientific papers, you look at summary, summary of uh, scientific papers that they will always say in their summaries that we observe this, we observe that, which may mean this or may represent that. Now, the word may is uncertainty. What they're saying is they can see this, but they don't know why we're observing this. So no understanding, no knowing or understanding of why. So therefore, they're seeing the effect, but not the cause to the effect. Okay. Now let's go to this the next section, and this is cre uh, creators of the mind, okay, manipulators, and what they call deem themselves as gods. Okay, we're going to look at that aspect. Now the first name I'm going to bring up is Dedalus or Dedalus. Okay, it's spelled D A E D A L U S. And straight away when you Google search Dedalus is it says that from the mythology he was the creator of the labyrinth okay now labyrinth means mind okay because the mind's purpose is to lock you into duality where you are disconnected from your higher aspects of self so that knowing that understanding that you're always looking for so you're kind of lost 
it's what people would call a lost soul. You're trying to find your way through like this maze and you can't find the end. Okay? And I guess that's ascension, right? And that's why we've had failed ascension after failed ascension because my higher aspects of myself always said that we fail ascension because we were too logical, which means we're stuck in the mind. And we haven't seen the fact that the mind is actually not us. It's external to us. It's not us. Okay. So it's the creator of the labyrinth. So what we're seeing now in my sessions is we're not even using the word mind anymore. The word mind is a duality term. We're trying to throw away as much duality terms whatsoever, which is really masks. And we're removing the mask and we're seeing what the mind really is. And the mind's name is Daedalus. Okay? So we're removing Daedalus. We're looking for where Daedalus is accessing that person. And we remove that too. Okay? Um, another one that comes up is Icarus. Which is, again, in mythology, is Daedalus' son. Okay? Now... So what are these types of intelligences? They are intelligences. They just, what you need to know, you, again, we're not going to get too complex about this. We need to keep it simple because the heart likes simplicity. That's the way forward. That's the way we evolve. Get out of being too complex and logical. Is that, it's an AI, okay? It's an intelligence that is foreign to you. And that's all you need to know, okay? It's not your innate consciousness. So they have their own agendas, Okay, now they are deemed considered gods. Okay, now if they are deemed considered gods in our history and mythology books, why do they need us to create for them? That's why we call them manipulators, because they created the mind and the mind's purpose to lock us into duality. And the sum total of duality is to sabotage your own creative power. So therefore it creates more of what they want and less of what you want without you knowing. Okay. So when we say it that way, who really has the creative power? Who really is the God? It's not them. It's us. That's the game of duality. Is we are the gods but we're so locked up in the mind and disconnected from our higher aspects of our consciousness, our intelligence, our true intelligence, that we never know that. Okay? So, one interesting thing about Icarus, when I googled Icarus, first thing that came up on the list was it was a game, Icarus game, it's called The Future of Survival. Okay? Now, this is a reference to me immediately to the game of duality because part of the game of duality is to distract your attention, which will lead to you reacting and responding in an unaware way where you get locked into the sympathetic nervous system, which is your mode of survival, where you start to create it of fear. Okay. Now, in Greek mythology, it says that Icarus gets his wings burnt by flying too close to the sun. And he falls down and he drowns in the ocean. Now, the symbology of sun is, well, in Latin, sun is S-O-L, soul. What does that sound like? So, the symbology of the sun is your light, your soul. Okay? So... When we connect to our light and realize who we truly are, remove the mask of what is the human, what is this physical reality, we bring our light forth and the game's over for Icarus, for Daedalus. So that's the symbology of that story, okay? Now, when we get in the symbolism or the symbol of Icarus is a... Uh, uh, hubris, okay, and overconfidence, okay, so that when I looked at the definition of hubris, because it's connected to, to, to the overconfidence, excessive pride or self-confidence 
defiance of the gods, which leads to nemesis. Now, nemesis uh, means one that inflicts retribution, vengeance, place you in fear. Okay. Mechanics, doesn't it? Doesn't it make sense? Now, we don't, I don't call them gods. They're manipulators. We're the gods, okay? Now, think about it. If you go around, just normal folk, right? And you start to say, hey, I'm a god. Or I've got all these creative capabilities. What are they going to tell you? They're going to say you're grandiose and you're going to say, you're, god, you're nuts. You're joking. You're not that. But that's duality talking. That's manipulation talking. That's conditioning. That's programming talking. Because it's, it's trying to stop you from thinking that you are that. Because it wants to limit you. It doesn't want you to know your true identity. Okay. So if the game is to manipulate us, well, why then? Why? Because they need our ability to create. Okay. Okay, so we are the creators. We are the creators. Okay. And they have used the game of duality, or what we call the game of duality, to manipulate our creative abilities. But you hold the power. You just need to be aware of it. Only if you knew it, right? Well... Here at Truly Holistic, that's what we're going to teach you how to be. And this is unique. This is cutting edge stuff. There's not a lot of people talking about this stuff. Not that I'm aware of anyway. That I know in my field. So we've talked about the game of duality, right? So that is the duality process. So I have a chart in my system that I use a lot within sessions and it's called the game of duality chart which kind of takes you step by step into how they manipulate you how they trap you into duality and the first step is distracting your attention because while you're here as the so-called human we there's a universal law where you place your attention you immediately consent your energy to be directed to that thing to create more of it. So by distracting your attention away from the things you want to create and the things that you love, because you love those things because it connects you into the heart, and the heart is the way to your consciousness, to your true identity, to your authenticity. If they distract you enough about all the problems that are going out in the world, one, it removes you from your true uh, true self. So it locks you into duality, locks you into the mind, locks you into the sympathetic nervous system so you're created out of fear, not out of love. So it's manipulating your healing, your creative ability to, to create chaos. An energy that does not reflect your heart's desires okay so as i say they'll distract your attention to get you to respond or react in a way a lot of people come up to me in sessions and they go hey i i'm still getting challenges in my life well we're supposed to that's what allows you to learn and therefore grow it's not about the challenges that come into your life it's what's well, one seeing that that they're an opportunity to grow not that it's a problem and two, that it's not that coming into your life. It's how you respond and react to it. Okay. Which is a choice. But you have to have awareness when you are going to respond and react. Because if you don't have that, then you'll re re respond and react in a way that you get locked in the sympathetic nervous system. Which then affects your intention ability where you will sabotage your creative power to create more of the thing you don't like. Instead of the things you do like. Okay. Okay. Now the sympathetic nervous system is just an extension or expression coming from the mind. Okay. Uh, I always say that sympathetic nervous system is 
your mode of survival, while the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the opposite to that, is your space to thrive. Okay? So they don't want you in your parasympathetic. They want you in the sympathetic. Okay? So your intention will reflect your attention. And then your reality and what you experience will then reflect your intention. It's a cascade of events. And as I say, all mapped out. Already have that all mapped out and I can help anybody with that. Okay? And that's quite often if we get stuck in that game of duality, we create a vicious loop for ourselves, which a lot of people find very hard to break. And that's understandable because we've been here many lifetimes as part of duality. Now, a perfect example of this is what we're all currently going through at the moment. You know what, okay? And I'll just say it that way, and I think hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. A lot of people was wondering, hey, it's, it's been around for like a year and a half, two years now. When, when is it going to go away? Well, the reason why it's hanging around is we've got billions of creative forces with their attention on it every moment of every day. And when we have our attention on it, we are feeding it our own energy. Energy we will not get back. But we allow that, you know what, to remain in our awareness. Okay? That's how powerful we are. Okay? Constructively and destructively. That's why we need to know our creative capability. Now let's get into the next aspect, or the last aspect. And this is to do with computer virus connection. For anybody that's done sessions with me, they'll understand that I look at ourselves as like a computer. As my higher aspects have told me, stop looking at yourself as a physical human body with all this compartmentalization of all these different systems and areas that make up you. Instead, see yourself as an interface. Now, when we look at a computer, what else can we call it? An interface, an iPhone, an interface, okay? Why, you know, why are we seeing such a drive in phones, iPhones and all this technology? It's an extension for an intelligence. AI have been using that, right? Just like you, you are an interface to allow an intelligence through it, okay? Now, has anyone seen the movie Inception? Okay. Now, the whole movie is about, it was all revolved around planting an idea. Okay, deep into someone's subconsciousness, okay? Okay, in that movie. Because their life can be then fully, fully formulated around that specific idea. So, they're kind of being manipulated, right? Because it's been planted there. Okay, that's programming and conditioning, right? Now, the way I see this is that ideas can be planted lifetimes ago. As I say, as I, as I, as I told you before, that they see the long-term picture. It's not just about this person, this lifetime, this person, lifetime. They know you're infinite. Okay, you might not know that. Hopefully you do now. Um, so they plant these ideas, condition programming, which still have an effect on you now. That's why it's so hard to break. Okay. It has had an effect on you for many lifetimes. Understand that the intelligence that has controlled humans or humanity, it sees the long game, as I, as I said just before. Okay. A perfect analogy is like McDonald's. McDonald's advertise for the young, for the little, the young children. Because they know that if they get them into McDonald's, they'll have a customer for life. Okay? Anyway, let's move on. Now, this is a definition of a computer virus. And please, just think about what we're going through currently, right, in the world. With you know what. Virus writers 
use social engineering. So we were talking about geoengineering before, right? Virus writers use social engineering deceptions, aka distraction of attention, right? Right? And exploit detailed knowledge of security vulnerabilities, aka putting humans into fear. That puts you in a state of vulnerability, okay? To initially infect systems, cells, organs, body, and to spread the virus, put others in fear. Now, this was deemed motives for creating viruses from the same page I got that definition from, of a computer virus. Includes seeking profit, desire to send a political message, personal amusement. Well, I presume the manipulators find it quite amusing. To demonstrate that a vulnerability exists because that's control. For sabotage and denial of service. So what do we what and when we're in that state, what are we doing? Sabotaging our intention, our creative ability. Or simply because they wish to explore cybersecurity issues, artificial life. What do we call intelligence that's not our innate intelligence, our consciousness? Artificial intelligence. Right? So the mind is the access for AI. Because the mind's not us, okay? And evolutionary algorithms. So an evolution of controlling the environment, which then controls the expression of what exists within that environment. Right? Okay? So... One last thing I'll mention here, and this is really brand new, is that um, in my charts, I'm dropping all the compartmentalization of the body. I was told to drop it all because it all comes from the library of duality. So instead of seeing auditory system, respiratory system, cardiovascular system, digestive system, all the different components that make up within those systems, which is all logical, all complex, which... It's a mind creation. It's not nothing to do with the heart. It's nothing to do with the fact that you're an interface. Okay. Now, what we feel, like if we have an issue, right, and we say, let's let's use an example here. If we have a visual problem, a visual issue, we've got dryness of the eyes and so on, we'd call that a symptom. Okay. Now, what we're finding is that that is just merely an expression of the body that has come about due to what or who is controlling the environment that you exist within. So those expressionized symptoms is merely a distraction of your attention. The origin of the problem doesn't exist there. So for healers, they'll go there, oh, we're going to work on the eyes and so on. And that may work to a certain degree, but we're not removing the root of the problem by doing that. Again, that's a, it's, it's, it's a tactic of the game of duality, of these AI intelligence, Daedalus, Icarus, and so on. It's, it's merely, and plus, when, what's, the, what's the law in regards to attention? Where you place your attention, you direct the, your energy to create more of. So if your attention is going to the, a certain area there, there's always a problem. What are you doing? You're feeding it. You're allowing it to remain as part of your awareness. You're holding that space for it to remain there. So what does that mean? You will not get rid of the problem. Your energy is going into keeping it, the, keeping it there without you knowing that. Okay? So by seeing yourself as truly what you are, as an interface, like a wholeness... A doorway which you are enabling flow of your light, your consciousness to come in through to then create. Because that's your purpose here. Then, and removing that idea that all these compartmentalization of the body. 
you may feel a symptom somewhere, which is an expression of, of, of that. But there's no little box for you to place it in and to hold it there because there's, there's only flow. Okay, so you can see how you will not hold that as part of your awareness. So it immediately is, immediately is just forgiven, let go of. Okay, so we're going to be doing a lot more of that uh, in session work and it's working a treat so far. So really what this emphasizes again, the importance of environment. It's not necessarily about the specifics. It's about those specifics that you're then feeling as a symptom is just an expression that's coming from somewhere else where the origin of the root of the problem, and a lot of the time, it's based on what is that environment, because that environment will control how that thing expresses itself within the environment, okay? And I gave examples about that before. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. I know it's been quite lengthy, but a lot of information Okay, and this is where Truly Holistic is going. And I feel we're really cutting edge at the moment. Okay, because it's not acceptable to try and resolve duality problems with duality solutions. That's what Einstein said and defined insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I don't want to be part of that. Okay. So if you want true growth true evolvement, true ascension. Book an appointment for healing or coaching at trulyholistic.net, T-R-U-L-Y-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C.net. Now, for people that have had sessions with me before and haven't done it for a while, this is, we're looking at things in a completely new way now. I think it's a, a massive step up. My charts are completely changing we're simplifying and what that tells me is that we're just working solely on root original problems or what we need to work on we're not working on the superficial stuff we root pull the roots out everything else will come out with it okay and along the way you will get the information to be empowered to know truly who you are and how you can use your own creative capabilities it's exciting stuff. Also, please like the video. Subscribe to my channel here. Um, until next time.